Hi guys! Today I'm reviewing the Ninja Air Fryer. This is different from the Ninja Foodie, which is a pressure cooker and air fryer, and I have done a review. It's 13 and a half inches tall, 11 inches wide, and 13 inches deep. The cord length is 31 inches. It's about 100 degrees out today, so I figured this was the perfect time to review this air fryer. I don't want to cook anything in my regular oven, it's just too hot. The Ninja comes with this basket. The ceramic coated basket holds four quarts. Steel multi-layer rack. And the ceramic coated crisper plate. The plate simply sits in the basket, just push it down. You can use the rack on top of the plate to cook more food. When you first get the unit, wash the basket, crisper plate, and rack in warm soapy water and dry. They're also dishwasher safe. You can put food directly in the basket on top of the crisper plate or rack and just slide the basket into the unit. If you're using your own baking dish, you don't have to use the crisper plate. The unit comes with a user manual and a quick start guide. There's a cooking chart with time and temperature for different meat, frozen foods, and fruits and vegetables. There are also 20 recipes for french fries, jerky, chicken, fish, and dessert like brownies and baked apples. There's an air intake vent on top, so don't block it. There's also an air outlet unit in the back. When you're using the unit, make sure you don't put it against the wall. There should be space around it for air circulation. The control panel has different function buttons for air fry, roast, dehydrate, and reheat. Temperature arrows to adjust temperature and time arrows to adjust cooking time with any function. The start pause button is to start or stop cooking. And the power button is to shut off the unit. If you don't use a unit for 10 minutes, it goes into standby mode. When you use any function, heat for three minutes before cooking. When you use any function, the default temperature is going to be displayed. With roast, the maximum temperature is 400 degrees Fahrenheit and the minimum is 250 degrees Fahrenheit. For air fry, the default is 390 degrees Fahrenheit, goes up to 400, and the minimum is 300. For dehydrate, you can go down to 105 degrees and go up to 195. For reheat, the default is 350, you can go down to 270 and go up to 400. There's a handy sticker on the unit that gives you time and temperature for popular foods like chicken and french fries. When you're cooking, you don't have to use oil with any ingredients, but it'll look and taste better if you use about a tablespoon of oil. This is not meant to be used as a deep fryer, so don't put large amounts of oil in it. To clean, you can hand wash the basket, plate, and rack, or put them in your dishwasher. The outside of the unit can be cleaned with a damp cloth. To get rid of any food residue, you can clean the heating element with a brush. Let's try making frozen mozzarella sticks. I've put the crisper plate in the basket. According to the booklet, frozen mozzarella sticks should be air fried at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 8 to 10 minutes. For an 11 ounce box, I'll heat the unit for 3 minutes. Press on, air fry, temperature is 375, 3 minutes, and start. The timer counted down and now we can cook the mozzarella sticks. The outside of the unit does get hot. The basket is also very hot. This is 11 ounce box of frozen mozzarella sticks. It's best if food is in a single layer. I've set it to air fry at 375 degrees in eight minutes. There were about 30 seconds left on the timer. Uh, I did smell the mozzarella sticks, so I figured they were done. They definitely look done, and there's a little bit of cheese coming out of one of them, so I know they're done. You could press start pause anytime to pause cooking, take the basket out, check the food, and when you put the basket back in, press start pause again, and it'll just finish the rest of the cooking time. Turn the unit off. The outside again is very hot. So use oven mitts if you're going to move the air fryer. Use nonstick tongs to remove any food because the plate is nonstick. You don't want to scratch the surface. All of them are intact except for two with the cheese oozing out. They're perfectly cooked and crispy. So mozzarella sticks are done in seven minutes. There's some crumbs and grease on the plate. I'll wash it off and next we'll make french fries. Wait till the plate cools down to remove it.
It does pull straight up. For french fries, it's recommended to cut the potatoes into thin sticks about two inches long. Since my potatoes are very long, I'm just going to cut them in half. And that's about two inches. I'm using one pound of peeled russet potatoes. I've soaked the potatoes in cold water for 30 minutes. Drain them and pat them dry with paper towels. Toss the potatoes with one tablespoon of vegetable oil or canola oil. I've put the crisper plate in the basket. I'll heat the unit for three minutes. 390 degrees. It's done preheating, now we can put the fries in the basket. Just shake them to make sure they're even. They won't be in a single layer. Halfway through cooking, you can shake the fries or toss them with tongs. Air fry the potatoes at 390 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. I'll set the timer to 22 minutes. It's been 10 minutes, I'll press pause. Toss the fries. You can see the fries on top were golden brown. Press start and it'll finish the rest of the cooking time. I'm going to go ahead and check the fries. I'll turn the unit off since the fries are done. So that was about 18 minutes. If I keep cooking these, I think they're going to get too dark. Most of them are golden. You can see some of them are white. But they are cooked. A little salt. Most of them are crispy and they were done in 18 minutes. To get them very crispy, you have to let the fries get to this stage where they're very dark brown, but I think that um, some of them might burn if you let them cook too long, so I wouldn't recommend cooking them for more than 18 minutes. Definitely use a tablespoon of oil. If you don't, the fries will have a weird dry texture. Next, I'll make chicken wings. This is two pounds of wings that are washed and dried. I've cut the whole wings into pieces, into the drumettes and the little wings. I'll season them with salt, garlic powder, and ground black pepper. I'm not gonna add any other seasonings because they're going in my sweet and spicy sauce. If you want that recipe, I'll put a link right below this video. Mix this up. crisper plate is in the basket. To add oil or not is up to you, but I like to add a tablespoon of oil with the chicken wings so they have a nicer appearance. The skin just looks prettier and it'll be a little bit crispier. Again, heat the unit for three minutes first. Three minutes are up, we'll put the chicken in. We'll cook them for 22 minutes and I'll toss them halfway. It's been 10 minutes. You can see the chicken is getting golden brown on top. The ones on the bottom are white. cooked for 22 minutes.
They're all golden brown on at least one side. Some of the oil from the basket came out, so it's best to just remove the chicken with tongs instead of pouring them out. The chicken is cooked and it's pretty tasty too. Is it as crispy as deep fried chicken wings? Of course not, but it is crispy and they're fully cooked in 22 minutes. These are regular wings. Some chicken wings are very big and if you're getting those, then I would suggest cooking them for a few more minutes. So you saw how the Ninja did on the frozen mozzarella sticks, french fries, and chicken wings. As for the volume, when the ninja's on, it sounds like a loud fan. It's not too loud, but you can definitely hear it. So this ninja can make a pound of french fries in under 20 minutes and two pounds of chicken wings in 22 minutes. If you want to get this ninja, I've put a link right below this video.